Distinguished future physicians, welcome to Stomp on Step 1, the only free video series that helps you study more efficiently by focusing on the highest yield material. In this video, we're going to be covering odds ratio and relative risk, as well as the difference between probability and odds. This is the ninth video in my biostats section, and I hope you check out the rest of these videos when you're done with this one. Here's a list of related topics that I thought were low enough yield that I chose not to cover them in the videos. I would suggest not spending much time studying these topics until you've mastered all of the high yield material. The terms odds and probability tend to be used interchangeably in everyday life, but when you're talking about biostats, the two terms are different. Generally speaking, they both represent how likely something is but they're calculated slightly differently and used in different situations. You can think of probability as just being percentage. It's the number of occurrences of a certain outcome compared to the total number of events measured. It's gonna range between zero and one, or zero percent and 100%. So you can think of it as the event of interest divided by the number of times the event of interest happened plus the number of times the event of interest didn't happen. Or you can think of it as the number of positive events divided by the number of positive events plus the number of negative events. Odds, on the other hand, is a ratio of the likelihood of an event happening compared to the likelihood of an event not happening. So it would be the event of interest divided by the event of interest not happening. Or the number of positive events divided by the number of negative events. Unlike probability, odds can range anywhere from zero to infinity. It's not just constrained to zero to one like probability. It's easy to illustrate the differences between probability and odds using games of chance. Consider rolling a dice. The probability of rolling a four on one attempt with one six-faced die is one in six. The odds of rolling a four are one in five instead of one in six. Another example would be, consider you have a 60-person sample for your study, and 13 of those 60 have lung cancer. In this case, the probability of a person in the group having lung cancer is 13 over 60, and the odds of a person in that group having lung cancer are 13 over 47. When events are very common, the difference between odds and probability is pretty high. Consider flipping a coin once. The probability of getting heads on that toss is 1 over 2, or 50%, and the odds of getting heads on that one flip is 1 over 1. However, when you start talking about really rare events, the difference between probability and odds is really tiny. You can't even tell the difference between the two when you take into account rounding. So consider you have some sort of lottery or drawing with 10,000 people in it. In that case, the probability of one person winning this drawing would be 1 over 10,000, and the odds of winning would be 1 over 9,999. When you round, those both come out to 0 .0001, so you really can't tell the difference between the two when something is that rare. Now that we've learned the difference between odds and probability, we can start using them in relative risk and odds ratios. You can see here in the top right, I gave relative risk and odds ratio a high yield rating of six. For those of you that don't know what that is, it's a scale from one to 10, giving you a rough estimate how important these topics are for step one. And if you want to learn more about the high yield rating, you can go to my website here. The reason we need to understand the difference between probability and odds is because Relative risk is calculated with probabilities, and odds ratios is calculated with odds. The relative risk is one probability divided by another probability, or you can just think of it as a ratio of probabilities. As the name would imply, the odds ratio is just a ratio of odds, or a proportion of odds. The way I think about this is the odds ratio is a ratio of odds, as the name would imply, and relative risk is not a ratio of odds. So I just think of it as being the other other one. Now that you're starting to understand what relative risk and odds ratio are, you need to understand when to use them. More often than not, on step one, they'll ask you just to calculate one of them. They'll just tell you to calculate relative risk or odds ratio. 
But there are also times where you have to figure out which of these measures to use based on the setting. So based on whatever study they're describing, you have to first figure out whether to use odds ratio or relative risk and then calculate it. So you can see that cohort studies and randomized control trials use relative risk to compare the incidence of health outcomes between different groups. And case control studies use odds ratios to compare the incidence of past exposures or treatments. I have a really stupid mnemonic to remember which one has relative risk. I think about a group of pirates, and cohort is just a fancy name for a group, and I think about this big group of pirates all saying R. So that would, RR would stand for relative risk, and the group is a cohort. So, you know, cohort uses RR, and then I just think of case control being the other one, which is OR. Now that we understand the research setting for each of the terms, OR and RR, we can redefine those terms a little bit and be a little bit more specific to the setting. I should note that I don't really think you need to memorize these formulas that I'm about to show you, because if you understand the simpler formula and the setting, you should be able to sort of build this in your head during the exam. But just to help sort of round out the concept, I'll give you these formulas. Here is the relative risk that you would use for cohort studies. It would be the probability of getting a disease if exposed divided by the probability of getting a disease if you're not exposed. Here would be the relative risk in a randomized controlled trial. It would be the probability of the outcome of interest happening if you're receiving the drug divided by the probability of outcome if on the placebo. And finally, here is odds ratio used for case control studies. It'll be the odds that the disease group were exposed divided by the odds that the control group was exposed. You also need to be able to interpret RR and OR. The key thing to remember for both of them is that the point of no difference is one. So if you receive an RR or an OR of one, that means there's no difference between the two groups being compared. That would mean that the treatment or risk factor being studied has no effect on the rate of outcome development. Similarly, an RR or an OR of two means whatever you're measuring is two times as likely to occur in the group being studied when compared with the control group. And an RR or an OR of 0.5 means that it's half as likely in whatever group you're studying. That brings us to the end of this video. If you liked it and want me to make more of these, please tell your friends and classmates about Stomp on Step 1. I don't have the resources to do any sort of advertising, and I don't have the time to really dive into anything like social media marketing, so the only way people are going to find out about these videos is by you, the viewers, so please do pass that on. Thanks, and good luck with the rest of your studying.